School is back in session for many university students, including for my classmates and me here at MIT. And many of us are coming back to campus for the first time in almost a year because, well, you know. And with everyone back, I figured the opportunity was ripe to have some fun and do a little bit of pranking. But the old school method of pranking is not necessarily socially distant compliant. I wasn't ready to risk starting a super spreader event just for the sake of the meme. But you know what they say, modern problems require modern solutions. And that is what inspired me to build this, my very own socially distanced prank robot made using the new LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor. If you want to see how I built this robot and see some of my classmates' reactions to me using it, you better stick around. What's going on everyone? My name is Kyle and you are watching BuilderDude35, a YouTube channel that's all about Lego Mindstorms. And in celebration of April Fool's Day being today, I'm sharing with you my prank robot, which I made using the new Lego Mindstorms robot inventor. April Fool's Day should be a national holiday, by the way. Just think about how much fun that would be. The idea behind this robot is the world's most technologically advanced. <laughs> oh, I can't talk today. The idea behind this robot is the world's most technologically advanced game of Ding Dong Ditch, with a twist. What this robot does is it knocks on the door and waits for the door to open. It has a sensor that detects when the door opens, and when that happens, it fires these projectiles at the door or into their room to give them a little bit of spook. The whole safety margin comes from the fact that it's completely autonomous. So I can set it up in front of their dorm, walk away, and then observe from a safe distance while they get the prank of a lifetime. <laughs> At that moment, I was scared. Well, you see, I first opened the door and I, I didn't see anything. So it was with dread that I slowly looked down to the floor and saw this machine of death staring back at me. And it was at that moment that the harpoon fired and I felt the impact. And you may be wondering, how does all of this work? Well, I can tell you that it is astonishingly simple, which is something that we engineers always love to see. The first important feature of this prank robot is the robot's ability to knock on people's doors. To implement this function, what I did is I took one of the Lego motors and put it on the side of the robot and attached it to a big lever. And on the other end of this lever is a couple of tires. These tires give it enough weight so it makes a substantial sound when it hits the door. It's essentially acting like a miniature rubber mallet. And you can think of if you're familiar with the way the pedal on a kick drum hits the drum, it's pretty similar of a concept. And this is enough to give the illusion that there's an actual person knocking on your door. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> what the? Oh, that's sick. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so cool. Did someone like, did someone really pull the oldest trick in the book on me? Someone just like ding dong dished me? Like what, who, who has the time of the day to ding dong dish me at this moment? And then I look down and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I was thinking maybe, maybe those chimp brains finally got smart enough and they assembled something that would attack me indirectly like that. Well, when I looked, when I looked the corner, I found the, the next, the next in line, it was, Kyle Markland <laughs> smirking from the corner of the room. <laughs> yeah, it was had to be Builder Dude. You know, that's what I was when you live in the house of Builder Dude. And of course, when most people hear knocking on the door, they come to answer the door. Most people. But the tricky part is not everyone answers the door with the same speed. Some people might be there right away to open the door as soon as they hear the knocking. Other people might be blasting K-pop in their headphones, might not hear it at first and need a few minutes to come to the door. So to solve this problem, I integrated an ultrasonic sensor into the front of my robot. This ultrasonic sensor measures the distance between the robot and the door. And whenever there's a big change, a big increase in the distance between the robot and the door, that signals to the robot that the door has been opened and it's time to trigger the prank. And this way, no matter how long it takes for a person to open the door, the robot is waiting for the perfect moment to strike. <laughs> oh, when the door opened, I actually was completely terrified. Well, first I thought I got ding-dong ditched. 
I opened the door, no one was there, looked down, saw that saw this little death machine and had no idea who sent it or what was going on, and I Yes, I was I was very scared. You see a robot coming to attack you, you run in a zigzag motion. If they're smaller than you, try to kick them away. Um, just don't stay in their line of sight. What happens as soon as that door swings open? Well, the robot shoots you. You can see on top of the robot, there are two cannons angled at a 45 degree angle into the air towards the person opening the door. And each of these cannons fires one of these Lego missiles. It's a spring loaded blaster. So when that door opens, both of the missiles will fire out at the person. Uh, now I gotta go pick them up. This double launcher cannon shooter thingamabob is what I think is another fantastic example of beautiful engineering simplicity, but you know, of course I'm a little bit biased. You can see that the Lego cannon pieces fire when this red button gets pressed in. So what I did is I attached two of these cannons side by side, put a motor underneath them, and now there's an axle sticking up out of the output part of the motor, and all the motor has to do is turn a few degrees in one direction and then turn a bunch of degrees in the other direction and the axle can push in the button on each of the little cannon pieces to fire the missiles. And this makes for a foolproof firing mechanism. Sometimes it really is the simplest solutions that work the best. Delta Dude 35 ruined my life. You know, like obviously I, I was traumatized as one is after a, a near death experience like that one. And so I, I've never feared anyone. I fear no man, except Delta Dude 35. He scares me, he terrifies me. And the entirety of this robot rests on one of these big teal Lego base plates, which is one of the newer Lego elements. And on the bottom, you can see there are four wheels placed flat on the ground. These wheels don't actually function as wheels, rather they're just rubber feet for the robot to stand on, so it has a nice sturdy connection with the ground. And the LEGO Mindstorm's Intelligent Hub is located at the back of the robot for easy access. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Let's get real here guys, if the robot apocalypse happens, don't say it was my fault. But if it was my fault, that would be really cool. Whether or not the prank robot actually succeeds is heavily dependent on how far away I place the robot from the door when I launch the program. And to solve that issue, I put one of these bent Lego beams out in front of the robot. And what this allows me to do is line up the robot at a fixed distance away from the door every single time. So now I can rely on being able to place the robot on the ground, then push the robot up against the door until the bar hits the door. And that is a consistent starting distance for the robot. So when I go to prank a bunch of my classmates, I can ensure that the result of the prank is consistent every time. Henry Ford would be really proud. There is a phenomena called a random chip event. And the thing about random chip events is that you never know what's gonna happen and you don't know exactly what's gonna happen. It's not necessarily- <laughs> Let's take a look at the code that makes this prank robot come to life. I programmed everything in Scratch remotely from my Apple iPad. And the program follows the same overarching theme of engineering simplicity. There are two branches of execution in this program. The first branch is responsible for the knocking. So it makes the robot knock on the door five times and then wait five seconds. And it keeps repeating this process of knocking five times then waiting a little bit until it notices a big increase in distance measured by the ultrasonic sensor, which, as I mentioned before, indicates that the door has opened. Then it moves the robot over to the second branch of operation in the code, which is basically just firing the projectiles. Well, in case of the impending robot apocalypse, I think you follow these three easy steps. First, subscribe to Dupe Builder Dude 35 and like his video. And then finally, 
uh, ring the bell so that way you can get the notification so that way when when uh, Builder Dude is able to give his advice for the robot apocalypse, you'll be the first to know. At the end of the day, now that everything is said and done, the only thing that this robot still needs is its very own name. So let me know in the comment section below if you can think of a catchy, funny, or zany name for this robot. I'd love to hear your guys' suggestions. And rest assured that this is not the last prank my housemates will be seeing this semester. Thank you so much for watching the video today. I hope that you learned something and maybe you're inspired to create your very own prank robot. I'd love to see what you guys end up making. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you next week's video. Later.